Okay. So we see a lot of uh, discussion here, a lot of players, uh, 906 players gathered today, for this week. Um, we see some strong players, last tournament winner, Kamura, Fedosev, Grishuk, Nipomyshi, Dubov, Mikhail Sarin, Kjörpair, uh, Bortnik, Anish Giri actually playing, Liam. Mamedyarov, uh, Vidit, uh, top uh, grandmasters from all over the place, yeah. So, very strong tournament. And this is gonna happen every week now, so that's great news. Have about three minutes here before the stream, or I mean before the tournament starts. Actually, wanted to. Show you guys, and there is a cup upcoming um, semi final between Duda and uh, Artemiev. It's gonna be a great match, of course. So, uh, between the games, I might uh, look at that as well. So, we have some admins uh, from the chat.com team. There's a guy named Monitor, there's Rakesh Kulkarni. Um, okay. Welcome everyone to this historic title Tuesday. Historic title Tuesday because it's the first time they're gonna make uh, this tournament, which has prizes for the stream for two for women and also for every week, right? Okay. Um, I apologize if you don't see the text. I don't. I apologize if you guys don't see the. Uh, hi guys, uh, he's back. Yes, I'm back. Also, just wanted to make sure you guys realize that there is a coming Artem with uh, versus Duda match on Chess Twenty Four. In the semi-final, uh, the previous semi-final was uh, between Anton Juara and Svidar, was won by Svidar. So that might be something for you guys also to check it out. I strongly recommend. Those are fantastic uh, future top uh, um, grandmasters in the world. Probably top 5, 10 for sure. I mean, not right now, but may maybe 5 years from now they'll definitely be there. And uh, they're going to play a match, I think, from 12 to 14 games. Okay, hi Andre, hi Rustam, uh, hi K1. Is it double L or double I? Du double I. I always mix those up. Thanks. Um, so we have. Uh, I can join. This is title tournament. This is gonna. This tournament might crash. Yeah, we we we. we I think this tournament just might crash. Uh, <laughs> thousand people, less than a minute, almost thousand people. Nine hundred eighty-six guys here. Um, so less than a minute, usually you get the sound, right? So that means get ready. I don't know what to play, guys. I have not prepared. I have not studied any theory in the last <laughs> half a year. Hippo or London? Let's vote. Um, I don't know. What do you guys want me to play? Uh, uh, thank you. I, I would like to play the good game, but <laughs> London. There you go, beat them all. Oh, well, I can't beat them all, obviously, but um, you guys want London? Okay, let's make it London system. Usually I play London system in the title because it's very solid choice, right? It's very very hard to lose in the London system. Yeah, London with 93, I don't really play. So the choice was either London or uh, Hippo. Call a Zucker Tor, uh, Tor, Tor, okay, it's uh, Bishop G5, I might play that, but uh, Coil uh, was E3, B3, probably not. Yeah. So don't forget, there is Artemio do the match also coming soon, like in uh, 15 minutes. So uh, check the action out there. Oh, I'm playing some uh, women's international master. Bin Bin from Vietnam. All right. Let's see how these guys prepared against London system. Okay. 
16 viewers. Thank you for joining. Uh, the important thing here is to play pretty fast because basically this is all standard. Bishop b6, good idea of queen b6, I guess. Uh, that's pretty interesting. So knight d2 maybe for now. Hmm. Or maybe just castle and ignore it. Because here I can play c4, but I'm not, so I'm going to just uh, knight d2. Set up my thing. Bishop c4, knight b3. And I suspect that my transmission is not that great. Is it? I think the site crashed, yeah? No? Maybe? Okay, I don't know. Alright, so bishop 6 is interesting. I haven't uh, played against this one in quite a long time. I think there was some analysis. I forgot what was the most accurate um, continuation for white. But it was not queen b1 for sure. So let's prepare against bishop f5 coming later. Uh, right now I'm thinking about knight c4 maybe. I get a little try to win a tempo. And let's see how black reacts. Then I'll just play back. And then I have knight e3 with a tempo. And then I can just grab this pawn. Right, so um, pawns are nice, right? a4. Pawns are always nice to have, especially extra pawns. So extra pawn from the opening, it's not bad. I would probably say that black has to play a6 and try to take this pawn on b2, although after bishop b5 this rook might be not that great, yeah? Uh, rook c8 first, black tries to be solid, but I don't think this is the right moment to be solid. I need uh, probably d5 was much stronger, but okay. I just want to, you know, sort of uh, protect everything, make sure I don't blunder stuff, which I normally do. And in this case, bishop a6, make sure knight goes to b7, closes everything for black. And maybe rook c1. Uh, preparing b4, c4 sort of stuff. Um, okay, so let's play b4. Let's push the extra pawns, right? And let's see. I'm not playing bishop h2 because I'm thinking that at some point the bishop might return back to d2 or e3 and help push those uh, extra pawns here. Okay? So this is the reason why I might play bishop e3 here. Or maybe knight d2 is more accurate. Um, knight d2 sort of get those squares under control, right? And especially the c4 square. So knight d2, bishop goes to e3. Then we are sort of ready for c4, c5. So let's play c4. Hit the stairs, hit the stairs, bishop e3. Sort of prepare for e5. And we'll just play d5 and c5 then. And then we just push the pawns, right? Uh, d5 and c5, of course. And c6 is a huge threat, so black is uh, not having a good day. Um, probably can just play c6. Knight c4 also looks good. Uh, bishop f5. I don't know. My 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 eyes are like um, all over the place. Yeah. So I don't know. So knight c4 generally looks pretty good. Then he might want to. She might want to do something there. I don't know. C6. All right. Let's see six. Just push the pawns. Keep pushing the pawns, a5, b6, looks pretty natural, right? Because if I have a5, b6, and these two pawns will be worth at least a rook, okay? Thank you, guys. Uh, and bishop f5, he has no squares, so black probably has to play this. Then I can play rook b1. Because now that pawn closed off that bishop, a5, for um, a5, why not? If queen a5, then knight c4, rook d5, b6. And c7, right? So that's the game over, c7. It's a queen or it's a rook. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so the, the pretty interesting game. Um, black messed up. I think she should have, uh, instead of b5, was too impatient, right? So that probably was not such a great move. Okay, let's go see what's going on here. 
uh, we see ah, what is this? It was some kind of uh, okay. So Nakamura plays something off beat because then he knows he will outplay his opponent later, right? What else? We have the previous winner. Let's look at Grishuk's game, right? Grishuk haven't played last tournament. So this is interesting. He started to play King's Indian. I like the way he plays King's Indian, so I can recommend. Um, right, and see, 94, 24 bishop f5, so black is already winning here. Opens the bishop, pair of bishops, wins the rook. Perfect game. What else? Um, Dubov, Sarin, Wartnik. Let's see Anish Giri's game. Uh, where did it go? Where did Anish Giri's game go? Come on, guys, just when I wanted to look at his game. Okay, we did game, right? Uh, hi, guys, uh, hello, everyone. Again, there is a currently Artemiev uh, versus... Uh, they haven't started yet? Okay. So, there is another match coming on the uh, competitive uh, competitors uh, uh, circuit, right? Okay. So, let's see what was this. We did playing white, Slav, normal, standard. Uh, white uh, castles long side, this is considered to be standard, the king b1, rook c1, sort of uh, two bishops white, uh, no attack for black, the only, and white has chances to attack on the king side, right? So in the end it forces black to exchange the queens, but white gets a pair of bishops, and this end game should be quite okay for black, I think, yeah, it is, and uh, this fm is actually giving a very hard time to beat it, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Alright, so let's see. Nakamura is should have been winning a long time ago. Yeah, he is winning. Um, my game we already saw. Krishuk won. And Vidit is uh, struggling. He might even lose here. Mm, I don't know. First game, yeah, the first game just happened. So uh, there's like uh, plenty of action here. Uh, we have 1047 players on 9 rounds, 3-1. Uh, means uh, three minutes for a game, one minute, uh, uh, one second uh, increment for each move. So we have a lot of strong players here. A lot of women players, by the way, uh, because there's a women's prize in this event. Benjamin Bock. Uh, a lot of interesting guys. Some names I haven't seen. If you want me to look at any particular game, let me know. You have only 110. ADP HD again, right? Um, yeah, I have a very old Logitech uh, webcam, so I'm doing good with the webcam. Um, but the good news, guys, I have ordered, uh, you know, a mic, uh, an upgrade mic that I could afford. So um, I ordered that. I'm supposed to get it tomorrow, and hopefully my voice will be better. It's like. Um, Stand on the table, guy. Uh, stay, uh, it'll be standing on the table thing, right? Um, uh, it's like looking like a, I don't know, what does it look like? It looks like a starship, you know, that you put into space with a rocket thing, right? So um, I don't know. I I read some reviews. Do you know? Just uh, felt it. Yeah. No Yeti. No, I couldn't uh, couldn't afford that one. Uh, so um, not 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 yet. Uh, maybe later. Uh, there was something um, much lower. It's like uh, how much was it? Do you remember? It was like one hundred bucks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because Yeti is like uh, it's like hundred and fifty. Uh, so this thing I call I ordered was like hundred dollars. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, all right, but you know uh, all other streams I can change to three sixty p.m. Uh, well, I'm trying to get a good quality video, I guess. Um, so I'm doing it this way uh, because you know I concurrently do Twitch and I also do the YouTube. I'm not sure sometimes YouTube uh, does it. Uh, they turn it, this um, stream sometimes it doesn't, but I want uh, the video look you know at least legible on the YouTube. So guys who just walk on my YouTube channel later, I'll have some buttons. Um, I'm not sure when, but I hopefully within this week. I actually hired I, I read. Actually, I saw some YouTube uh, channel streamers, and they recommended that I should hire some artists from Fiverr. Um, uh, so I actually trying one artist right now, and uh, their team is uh, going to do some stuff for me. 
I have no idea how I'm gonna, you know, once they do it, once we come up with some uh, revisions, how it's gonna look, but uh, hopefully it's gonna look okay. So, on their side, the Yeti is exactly 100 bucks. Yeah, but uh, see, it's uh, it's Russia. Well, I, where I live is in Russia, so uh, stuff here is uh, definitely um, different. Um, I think it's like more expensive. It's like uh, 16,000 rubles, I think. Um, so that's close to 150. Right. Um, you should contact Twitch and ask why stream has no option to change quality. I don't know. Um, uh, I thought that, yeah, well, I don't live in the US anymore. I haven't lived in the US for the last four years because uh, I married uh, this uh, Russian girl. And um, I've been living, staying with her together for the last uh, almost five years. Yeah, we've been together, yeah. It's almost five years together. Wish that come for wallet savings. Uh, well, thank to you guys, you know, thanks to your donations, I can uh, try to do, you know, good things with my channel. Uh, I'm actually playing an FM. So let's be a bit more careful with uh, what I do here. Uh, white develops pretty solidly. Uh, knight goes to e3, controls the center, etc, etc. I don't want to give him uh, too, too many double rooks on the e-file. So I'll try probably to exchange a pair of rooks and then I'll try to think about ways how to force white to play c4 sword roof and I want to provoke him to playing c5 at some point. Uh, so let's see how this works. Um, keeps buffering. Uh, I don't know dude, uh, I'm not the techno technical wizard here. So. Um, so there is some mate threat or something, I guess. Uh, knight of 4, knight 6 I don't really want to play that. Uh, queen d7 maybe, yeah, just uh, touch to be safe. Also get that f5 uh, square under control. So maybe f6 or h6, that's always the problem in this situation. Let's play rook c8 for now. Let's try not to spend too much time here, because uh, we don't want to lose on time, for sure. Even though there's increments only one second, it is not that much. It is probably only... Um, okay, so h6, you know, trying to be on the safe side. Uh, White is playing more or less very cautiously as well. So h6, I don't really like to play such move, but I guess I have to. You know, potentially White can fix this thing uh, by playing h5. Um, then knight will go to f5 and these pawns h6 and g7 will not be great. Okay, queen d3. So far we're just hanging around. Rook d8, I want to see what you're gonna do. Basically I'm just uh, shuffling back and forth. Um, this line I actually usually play this line for equality. I didn't look at my opponent. Uh, but he seems to be very solid I am. Fm even. So, um, draw is okay, you know. Even though he's a FM, the way he plays, uh, the way I see it, he plays very slowly, you know, very centralized uh, strategy, slowly improving his structure, pieces, great play, quite impressed. Uh, so I'm not gonna go for too much here, just, you know, equalize and see what I can do here. 95, okay. I cannot really allow F4 probably, so let's try this move, and then knight c6, and well, then knight takes d5, right? So that's his plan. Okay, uh, what else can I do? You can try queen c6, I guess. Um, but then rook d1, my rook is underprotected. I don't know. Queen d7, okay, for now. Maybe I shouldn't have exchanged that guy, but... Um, Okay, knight c6 definitely. On knight e4, exchange the knights. Uh, now we get sort of uh, can play a5, maybe h5. He wants to play four a5, I guess. So queen, okay, let's take over the file. Let's take over the file and try to exchange some queens. Queen f5. Um, 
allowing me to activate my queen. I'll do that. Okay, exchange. Queen to six, queen to six, rook is six. So let's let's just make a draw here. So I attack this pawn, rook b6, rook d3. We sort of exchange pawns, and I offer to you a draw. Okay, so well played by my opponent. Um, Polish FM solid players and dangerous. Can you watch Duchlis? is really creative. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so let's do that. Title Tuesday. Where are the games? Nakamura, Grishuk. Let's see Grishuk game. I like Grishuk games. I like watching his games. He is very dynamic. See, he's playing ready though, yeah? Look at this. That was a nice trap, yeah? Wow. Okay. Nice opening tra trap right by Grishuk. I never thought I would see Grishuk actually try to, you know, win by preparation the opening. Um, I guess he, the way he gets older, he is starting to use all the tricks in his arsenal. Okay, Queen's Indian with g3. Very solid choice by White. e4. Uh, this move, guys, pay attention. e4. Fantastic move in this position. You know, um, the, killing that bishop on b7 basically. And black cannot take on e4 because, uh, you know, White's bishop will be too powerful. So let's see. Knight c6, I'm not so sure. I mean, knight takes d6 makes more sense because uh, the difference in the minor piece is too great, but perhaps... Ah, there's tactics. If bishop f8, knight c7, right? And there is no rook c8 because bishop takes c8. So black is forced to play bishop here, but after rook c1, that bishop on b8 is absolutely terrible. Um, look at this perfect game by white. It's completely winning. And queen... Two extra pawns attack. Beautiful queen and knight. E easy win. Good job. Okay, so that was a great... D yeah, Duchless is Dubov. Um, he is Dubov. Okay, so what else? Let's take a look at Hikaru's game. Okay, this looks like a draw, almost. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Ah, the great show. Okay. Where we are... Alright, so they're starting the show there. The Artemiev versus uh, Duda. This is why we don't see Duda playing in this tournament because he's playing the tournament um, on Chess 24. That is one match I, I'm truly sorry that I have to miss. Otherwise, I would just you know make a stream specifically about that match because I think that match is uh, absolutely necessary to watch. Um, this looks like a draw, but I believe in Hikaru's uh, flagging skills, so he might win this. I'm very surprised he didn't take here and then run with his king because white should not be in time. He should have exchanged the queens and run with his king because that would be winning, I think. Uh, so he... yeah. I think he... ah, no, no, because the white king gets to e2. Alright, so... Um, black needs to exchange the queens in the moment when white king will not be able to get to e2 and prevent black king from reaching f2 square, right? Okay, so this is uh, clearly winning for black. Uh, a lot of checks. At some point... This bishop on h1 will be 1, but when, yeah? Uh, but then again, this looks like a draw now. Still, a lot of possibilities. Rapid format on Duda's game. Um, let's see. Chess 24. Let's, let me mute those guys, uh, the commentators, because, uh, uh, you know, we need to figure out things, how things work uh, for ourselves. Right, so... Um, where is this match? Uh, live, 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 live. Ooh. Magnus. Um, do, 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 do. Bantr, 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 Blitz. I, I don't even see it anymore. I think this one. Yeah, I think that's this one. And basically. Finding myself with more time. Right, so. Um, no, they, I think they're playing standard blitz, because if you look at this game, um, it's... Um, I don't, I'm not even sure they have increments here. Um, Car's mouse slipped, yeah. Ooh, wow! Flagger got... Ah, 
No, I think it was pre-move. Yeah, he likes to pre-move a lot. So that's that's the danger of pre-moves. Uh, you can get really unlucky with your pre-move. So let's look at last week uh, winner, uh, how he plays. There were some accusations against him uh, because uh, some people say the way he was playing in the title Tuesday was way above the level he usually displays in his regular games. And uh, so, that, but those uh, accusations were quashed. Some monitors said that you know that's fine. No problemo. Um, okay, it's pretty strange game though. Um, okay, so I'm playing an FM. I'm playing white. So let's go London system. So I mute these guys. And um, who is this? What do you mean? Who is what? Me? You know who I am, right? Um, good. Okay, uh, 59 people watching. So we see another London system. And bishop g3. And basically, I just want to play c4 and go for this sort of position. Um, because some people, in order to try to use the best weapon against the London system, they even willing to play d5, but then so many people play Nimzo, so many play Kings Indian, Grunfeld, uh, to play d5 for them, then you should just play c4 and play this sort of positions. <coughs> okay, because this is like classical, um, classical uh, Queen's Gambit decline, right? And um, so I usually like to play 95 here, sort of preventing 94. Because now if 94 can just take, play, play bishop c4, castles. Um, yeah, why not castle? And then I can basically, you know, just take on d7. And uh, take on d6. And then we have this Carlsbad structure, which I consider to be pretty good for white. Um, black can probably try to go for that c5, um, c4 thing, but that means he has to be ready to play the structure with the hanging pawns, which is not to everyone's particular taste. Yeah, I should have probably played queen b3 here, just to prevent that c5, while that bishop on b7 is hanging, but I'm just not sure that's such a great idea to do it at this point in time. So h3 for now, prevent knight g4. Um, Knight should go to e2 probably, uh, preventing again, again that c5 flank. Also bringing my knight closer to the king, just in case. And that a6 pawn uh, is not necessarily such a great thing. Um, so knight e4 questions, should I take this knight or not, right? So let's play a3, let's see what black wants to do. For now, I just want to play b4, make sure there is no c5 at all in the near future. And later, I might consider what to do about this guy on a4, yeah? Looks pretty good. Uh, so black is trying to create some play here on the king side. h4 I like, you know, creating that potential g3 square if I want to play f3 sometime, then that knight goes to g3. So that's um, good. Okay. Now what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this knight on e4? I don't like this knight, so let's grab this knight. I don't like active pieces uh, in general. And uh, so what to do now, right? Uh, his bishop might actually do some damage later on to my structure. Uh, queen b2. My king might be slightly open later. Maybe rook d1 first sort of create this potential threat of d5, right? And if black takes on d5, then knight c3. I want to open the center a little bit here. But for now, I don't see the way how I can dislodge that queen on d6. Um, there must be some way. Must be some way. At the same time, black, in order to play for an activity, has to play something like f5, g5, f4. So he goes for this g4 thing. Uh, OK. So let's... I don't like that t5 right now. Is g4 a threat? That is the question. Um, is g4 a threat? That actually is slightly unpleasant, yeah? Knight c3, g4, and then um, he attacks my pawn on g4. 
then I don't know what to do. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to play this way. Let's try to play this position this way. I mean, the worst I can do here is probably just uh, get into this uh, end game, which is not that great. So knight d4. That's the reason why I didn't play knight c3 because I want maybe my knight to go elsewhere. And um, let's check it out, right? So knight d4, queen e5 is surprise. Obviously, to play knight c6 and take with my queen here with the threat of queen g6. And uh, but of course, the real threat was to play d6, open the rook. Right, and now those queenside pawns look pretty tasty. Black playing Sukir Tort. Um, I'm not sure what Black is playing, but um, he has some weaknesses here. So I don't know. Rook g6 check. Just exchange pair of rooks. That should be a good idea. And then I can grab on b6. Because if. Oh, he doesn't. Uh, he, he plays like this. Um, Alright, let's grab the spawn. Let's grab the spawn. Also, I'll have queen d4 option, right? And um, rook h6. I don't know about king h8. Maybe I could have played rook h6 immediately, right? Because if king g8, then I have this check and queen h5, which is pretty annoying, I think. Right? Rook g7, queen h5, the threat of rook h8 made. So I don't think rook h8 now is extremely, extremely annoying. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, uh, this FM played really well in the middle game, but then. Um, after d5, knight d4, he started to play too cautiously, right? So sometimes you cannot play so cautiously. You have to, you know, be aggressive. So rook c5, rook g5, you know, we're going all in. Because rook g5, he'll have to block and then rook h8 mate, right? So it's made into, is a huge threat. And I think black is just lost. Uh, from the old school, still sneezes onto his hand. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so let's see what do we have here. What do we have here? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, yeah, white definitely mishandles the situation. Definitely, yeah, he is lost. Okay, so um, that didn't go well. All right, I'll check those games later. Um, why we have old games here? So let's see. Grishuk is the first choice, obviously. Another kid, right? Zamish. And this line he plays all the time. Uh, except when people play knight 2 he sacrifices the pawn by playing b5. But against bishop d3, hmm, c6. I expected c5, d5, knight 5 from him. Um, but I, I, I like this uh, system with black. Sometimes I played it. Because now you have sort of, after e5, you have... Uh, uh, standard uh, Spanish uh, Briar, you know, I play Briar m myself a lot of times. This also looks like Pierce, yeah, except that in uh, Spanish, white has knight on a 3. And uh, wait, 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 so what happened? Uh, so let's go over it. Uh, e5, white, black, two con, white, two con, b5, a4, good, okay. d5, just take on d5, knight b6, ah, you took, okay, now the queen d5, Bishop e4 uh, and knight c4. Wow. So th that was a tactical melee. And I think uh, probably this was analyzed in advance by Grishuk. So, so white just got unlucky. Because um, knight e3 is a huge threat. Knight e2. Oh, this looks like a draw. What's going on? Uh, this. Looks like a draw, but um, what happened? Why knight c6? Just play rook uh, d1, right? And uh, I mean, rook fd1, bishop has to take on a1, rook takes a1, just draw. Wow. And rook d6, and knight e7, white panicked. White panicked. Rook on d6, knight c6 are perfectly placed. There is no need to panic. Uh, just bring the king to d3, draw. And white just panicked in a big time. Too many pins, losing stuff, and uh, yeah. This is a win, of course, and white blundered, blundered of course, would be a 6, so nice game by Grishuk. Completely equal endgame, outplayed. Um, we have Krikor, we have Nippon Niyashi playing, so let's see what he's doing. Uh, of course, in Russian you say Nippon Niyashi. 
uh, with the accent on the second vowel. And um, yeah, it's very strange that um, in English uh, people like to say Nippon Yashi, like uh, the accent was on the last vowel, yeah? It's pretty strange. But okay, that's how uh, uh, claims to be bad coach. Uh, well, I'm a personal bad coach. I'm pretty okay at doing lectures, I think, but um, personal coaching is just so tough. It's just so tough. It's like, um, and uh, also, there is such a thing. Whenever people get a coach, then they just get lazy. They think that coach will do everything for them, and there is no such thing. There is no magical bullet. You still have to do a lot of work on your own. But still, yeah. I mean, I, I, I did it myself. You know, when I had some seconds in the match, I sort of get myself some slack. So I understand the feeling. But um, you gotta work. Do both playing Cree core. Ooh, Cree core. Not an easy jam to beat at all. But of course, why are you playing uh, this against Dubov? I mean, he thrill. He absolutely loves this unbalanced positions. It's just his cup of tea. Um, this should be a draw still. Even if black wins the spawn. Ah, this is a tricky end game. Yeah, tricky. Very tricky end game. Uh, but this looks like definitely this definitely is a draw. So what's going on? What is going on? Ah, wow, that is very nice actually. This is really nice. Uh, probably White should have played ninety six, ninety seven here. Knight takes h5. This should be a draw, yeah, because the way he played it, he just blundered into this knight of three check. So king h2, I think, was the critical mistake. Knight e6, knight e7 should be a draw. Um, right, going after that h5 pawn is uh, absolutely critical. What else we have? Bortnik, this guy killed me. Oh, all the games are done. Okay, so game four. Uh, for some reason, I'm playing white again. Dodo wins the first game. Yes, um, it's currently active. Uh, well, I'm pretty good relations with Artemiev. Um, I'm on communicative terms with the uh, Jan and also uh, Dubov. I mean, we played just so many times at the Russian Team Championship. You know, of course, Peter Swidler, you know, same age group, you know, old timers, been playing each other like so many years. Sure. Um, I can't say like really great friends with anybody. Uh, the stuff. You know, kind of, you know, professional chess players don't really have friends. I think one of the top GMs uh, recently explained it well. Yeah, you can't be friends uh, because you're a competitor, you're a dangerous dude. You want to beat them because you want to beat uh, them and get their prize money and, uh, uh, you know, steal everything they got. Um, what do you think? Yes, Mark is uh, great. Great dude, great coach. Uh, he can get you understanding of the chess game. Um, good. Uh, what is the social capital flash on the screen? Social capital flash. About lady friends. I have a wife, man. Be, be very careful. Yeah. Well. So, uh, what's going on? Why I don't see... Oh, it's my move! Oh, it's my move! I, th I thought it was his move. Oh my god, I just wasted one minute. Oh Christ, okay. This should be 5 check. Has to be played. Take. Oh my god. I thought it was my move. It was his move. Are you saying there is no friendship with the... Okay, I didn't say that. I'm saying with the GMs. When they're competitive at the top level. It is impossible to be friends, really good friends. Uh, I told him that you see his game. Good. I mean, um, I played Cree Court many times uh, during the Arena Kings while they were, you know, available. Uh, too bad the Arena Kings, they've been uh, stopped. But okay, that's life. So, Black has weakness on C6. Let's get on it, yeah? Let's get those C5 squares. Let's get those squares, dude. Let's get this pawn on c5. Probably 92 or so. Ugh, of course. His, his, his queen is protected now. What am I doing? His queen is protected. Pawn or knight. Ugh, 
pawn is kind of weak, so let's take with the knight. I completely forgot that his uh, stuff is protected now, so it's completely even. I mean, completely even. And when I say completely, it means it's totally even. So let's see some endgame skills here, gentlemen. Let's go for the endgame skills. I'm almost a minute behind this dude. Um, I'm not sure about that move. Let's play b3. Try to get some squares under control. f6. That means e5 is coming sometime. So, knight f3, prevention. Yeah, my pieces are like, psh, eh, they suck. Um, that bishop is coming. Okay, so, you know, black plays well. I'm happy with the draw at this point, I think. Bishop here. Um, I don't think I can win this game because uh, his pieces are really well placed. So, so instead of, yeah, I, when he played knight e4, he should have played somebody d different. Um, oh, he's playing for a win. Okay, let's see this. Uh, he's playing for a win. So he's testing. He's testing what am I playing for. And since he found out that I'm playing for a draw now, it's like um, he wants to play for a win. This is actually an interesting strategy. It's not bad. I do it myself all the time. So I can admit to its uh, good uh, taste. It's a good solid strategy. The reason I didn't play knight f3 is because I think knight on e2 will be doing more stuff here later. Actually, I think I should probably just start exchanging stuff and going for this particular... Well, he has to take, so I play rook c1 anyway. I just want to exchange rooks because rooks are really good with the bishops, okay? So that is the reason why I want to exchange that stuff. Um, because I lack space, and if I, if you lack space, you need to exchange stuff. Uh, now, now this lack of space is not really critical. And finally, I get some squares for my knights. So I'm pretty happy. And um, and if you play it like this, um, I can probably attack it. Yeah, um, king of three, I guess. Not 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 much time. Yeah. Okay, let's play king of three. Let's try to bring my king to the game. Trying to bring the king to f four, sort of become more active. Um, king of four, though, is not that great. So knight c five check maybe and b4. Maybe knight e4 was better. Um, maybe. And now I absolutely have to change this knight because otherwise that knight goes to b5. I absolutely have to do this. Ah, uh, wait, I'm lucky he doesn't have king c4 because of knight e6 check, yeah? I'm pretty lucky. So that means knight c4, knight c4, there is no king c4. That means also that my knights can probably blockade this uh, situation here. And I need to do something here. So knight d2 back. King f2. g3. Um, and basically just dance around with my knight. Dancing, king e2, king ready to go to d3 at some point, but maybe not. Knight f3, knight d2, looks looks good way to make a draw. So knight f3. Okay, it's a long time. Okay. Okay, so this looks like a draw, yeah? Well, he wants more. Okay, he wants more. Let the guy want more. I can basically just... I just you just need to walk around with your king, I guess. Um, okay, king here. Then I have one. Five, four, okay, and I just 
tricks. Try for some tricks, I guess. Not gonna be easy. And we managed to draw. Yeah. Okay, so not bad. Um, not bad. Oh, I know this guy. I played this guy before. Yeah, very solid positional player. Uh, there was 95 check to get his bishop, probably. Okay, maybe. Oof. Alexeyenko. Um, top guy. I think I beat him only once when he played. Um, so we see this dude, the Azerbaijani guy, on 4 out of 4. Uh, to be absolutely honest, you know, the, if you guys uh, saw that um, article by Badur Jabava on his uh, on Facebook, right, about that tournament, about that online tournament in France, he talks about uh, that topic, which cannot be spoken, right? So this guy, I am, right? Whenever I see an I am in the top somewhere, especially from Azerbaijan, it gives me. Uh, you know, it gives me a summary tough time. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Let's see, we have Mickey, last year's last tournament winner. He is playing here, trying to win this game. And um, Nimzo, yeah, Black is already doing great. Pretty solid. White sacrifices the exchange to push his pawns. And white wins by time out. What happened here? Black probably just lost his bishop. Yeah, bishop d6 check. Absolutely terrible move. Never move away this bishop from the long diagonal. Basically, any move by the bishop along the main diagonal is a draw. Okay? Any move. I mean, maybe white will get this win this bishop, although it's doubtful. I don't see any way for white to win this bishop and try to transpose into the rook and bishop and king versus uh, king and rook. It looks highly doubtful uh, because uh, the bishop and rook they really well they work really well together. So um, so if anyone can open the window, <coughs> okay. So again, as a known, I am. Um, anybody can open chest twenty four and let me know the score uh, for those guys. Uh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Um, Usually they have like a break after four rounds. I think I made a lot of draws already, yeah, so I'm like way, way behind. 1-1. Um, one, one. Of the whole Rajabov situation, I say Rajabov should be let in back. In addition, so it's a nine-player tournament, should be played starting from the scratch. That's the only way. Anything else would be just, uh, just you know, not legitimate. Not legitimate, in my eyes at least. I mean, who cares about my, my opinion, but, um, you know, a lot of people have different opinions. Anybody have uh, his own opinion, but you heard me. That's my opinion, okay? That is my opinion. Has to be replayed completely. 92... Bishop e6, so bishop g7 back, probably. Because if you can play f5 and e4 in this position, close that white's bishop on g2, and open your king's Indian bishop, black is fine. That is the whole point behind the system. Best solution, Canadian is this, and give Rajab a wildcard to the next candidates. That's your opinion, dude. I respect it, but that's not what I think is the right thing to do. So... Um, you asked my opinion, I said it, um, again, as I said, a lot of people have different opinions how to handle the situation. Um, I mean, Rajabov was not wrong, right? 
he did say that uh, there is a pandemic coming, right? I mean, he did say that. He did warn about this, and um, I think the guy, you know, he's a great chess player. He foresaw the events, I would say. And no matter what anybody says, you know, he turned out to be correct. So let's give him some credit for that, at least. Um, right, wow, okay. Well, that is a great match. Um, so what's going on here? So my threat is to play rook d8 and just grab this knight on c5, right? Because that queen on d5 and knight on c5, they're a bit shaky. So why has to do something here? Um, I don't know. Uh, I like my position. I close his bishop. My bishop is killers. Pair of bishops, right? You guys all remember how I love pair of bishops. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my uh, opening situation. Raja was guilty of being smarter than others and seeing some moves ahead. Exactly. That dude, you, you just said it best. Um, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. Right there. So, rook b8, just no rush. Prepare for this a6. And just, okay, move your queen. Um, no rush for anything. Ah, okay, but a6 and queen a4. I can play b5. Actually, I can grab this pawn probably, yeah? This pawn looks nice. This pawn looks nice. I don't want to play bishop c8, although I probably... You know, sometimes, you know, discretion is, is the best part of Valor, right? Sometimes you just, you know, keep your bishop. Keeping that bishop, that piece alive is, uh, is a great thing. If you saw my second game against Karpov, uh, there was a situation where I had extra queen. I just got the queen. He had rook and... Um, he had the rook... Uh, he had two rooks and knight versus my queen and rook. So he offered me the uh, the exchange of the rooks. And I had to make this absolutely awkward move with the rook. But I felt it was worth it because uh, it is easier to win with some pieces on board. And uh, I was proven correct in that respect. As that rook was kind of pivotal in me establishing the superior version of the queen versus rook and knight. Peter first and foremost should apologize when men need to make good compensation for him. Um, I have no idea, dude. Um, Peter is uh, a lot of grandmasters. Peter is like, like this huge monster that never wants to die. And, um, you know, if you just recall how many exactly GMs were trying to kill Peter, starting with Kasparov, right? Then uh, there was professional chess associations, there were other things, uh, it lives. Yeah, it's like this uh, unkillable uh, monster. Okay, this is extremely interesting. Um, I think that black... Ooh, black is worse now. Um, black is worse because he has to give up a pawn. Bishop is 6 probably best practical solution. Bishop takes, rook takes, queen f7, d5, and uh, white is better, yeah? Rajabov uh, is playing in the tournament? Is he? I didn't know he was playing in this tournament. Uh, uh, oh, I mean uh, in general, right? Um, okay. Well, let's take a look at Mamedyarov. He is playing uh, chess queen, who is a Kastinuk. Right, so let's see. Somebody wanted to watch some women games. Here we go. This is pretty standard, Karakan, and uh, Mamidyar started playing Karakan actually after uh, he started working with Drave. And working with Drave clearly improved his uh, endgame and uh, uh, made him much more stable than before. So Mamidyarov makes uh, made a lot of uh, improvement in the last five years, I think, thanks to work with Drave in part. Get to save playing... Uh, Zubov. Ah, come on, guys. Oh, Grunfeld was h4. Wow. This is famous Grunfeld was h4, and. And this looks like a draw. Whoa, the computer says that white is much better because black's bishop is on uh, f8 is not effective against preventing white's a6 pawn. 
he actually might oh why is extra pawn up uh, ah, I thought it was equal but it's extra pawn and uh, better piece right hmm good chance to win for white good chance to win so let's see um, what else we have okay let's look at the Indian kid oh India Anish Anish we just missed Anish blank let's let's watch Anish game. Let's see what Anish does. Uh, ooh, somebody played kid against Anish. There should be three solid, right? Um, I think white got nothing special. In fact, white is down a pawn. Okay, so he made the pawn back, but he is uh, worse in the end game. You see how it's incredible how strong these IMs guy. Okay, but black just blundered. Yeah, he played. Uh, Look at this, he played knight e7, and then he played rook c6, just phew, huge blunder. Rook c8, rook d8, check, king of 7 black wins, because rook c8, knight c8, rook d8, rook e8, then king walks over, breaks that uh, break, uh, breaks that hold uh, over d8 square, the knight goes d6, king of 7 black wins. Instead, instead, black just loses in one move, completely winning position. And, um, Duchlis is Dubov. So, okay, so we have this... Uh, very famous line in the Dutch. Um, I kind of hate this line uh, for black, so I stopped playing this for black. But uh, yeah, you, you, you don't give uh, Nihal Sarin a piece, extra piece. He wins, no matter who he sits in front of. So, um, Grishuk. Okay, let's see Grishuk. Ooh, Grishuk is a pawn up. This should be practically winning, yes. Yes, okay, uh, Zugzwang and etc. etc. is winning. So we see a London system being played against Grishuk, right? So let's see what. No. So another kid, he plays the old line in kid, um, you know, where black uh, delays playing c6, so it doesn't play c6 at all, allowing white to play knight d5 some points. Aha, uh -huh, so okay, here. Um, just grab the pawn on d6, man. Ah, okay, but then, right, okay, so knight d5, interesting. Knight b6. So white was pressing. I like white's position here. Yeah, white's position looks uh, very good. Black pieces are sort of um, stuck on uneasy squares. Knight d7 slowly. But you don't take that bishop, man. You should take the knight because it's semi close position. The knight has a lot of squares on e5. And uh, you need. And bishop on c8 is doing absolutely nothing. I mean, strategically, you just don't do this. Uh, you grab the knight, and white is slightly better. So white was hoping for this trick, but uh, again, the square on g4, you see the square? Now white had to give up his important bishop for that square. And uh, white ha black has also a-line control. White king is weak, and uh, boom. Grishuk wins, right? So let's see what happens. Boom, boom, bishop f2, completely winning position. Good job. Okay, um, we have a lot of other players, and last game here. Some I am, for example, the Savelli from Russia is 2900, really good stuff player. Yes, I actually played Savelli, and I didn't know who this guy was. I mean, it turns out, of course, he plays a lot on a uh, lead chest, he plays uh, bullets a lot. So very young, very fast, and uh, I played him last year at the World um, Blitz Championship. And... Um, it was incredible. You know, he is very tactical. He sees all those tactics, so I lost the game to him. I was very upset about that. Okay, so Dude is probably going to win the match then. Unless uh, Vladislav comes up with something. Um, right. So, what else can be said about that? Savely Golubov, right? So, uh, that's uh, one strong I am. Yeah, and I told you guys, there was the story with him playing Domingos. It's like half of the tournament hall was there. Savelli had extra pawn. And um, he couldn't make progress, but he was trying really hard to flag Lanier. So at some point they were repeating moves like for, uh, and making same position, just one move, uh, one pawn move, and then repeat the same position. At some point Lanier was really upset with Savelli like really banging on the clock because you're not supposed to bang on the clock um, so at some point Lenire was really angry and uh, he started to play like his best chess so Savelli loses one pawn, blunders then he blunders the second pawn 
and they play, 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 and then Lanier kills him. So that was one incredible game, because after that game, like that whole Cuban, uh, you know, squad, he was like cheering really hard for Lanier, because uh, Golbev, he has really bad manners when he's playing chess, uh, blitz chess, over the board. Like banking on the clock, like, like in a lot of games I saw him banking on the clock. That is unacceptable. So, um, where is the next round? Uh, okay, we see some people here. Okay, 95, 95, 96 should be a draw, also 94. Yeah, this should be a draw. I mean, White can just grab this pawn on f6 and it's a draw, right? Um, because this is wrong uh, color for the bishops, but okay, knight h5, draw, just make a draw. Yeah, I mean, don't hold up the tournaments. Thank god, okay, he's dead lost. Uh, who? Dubov dead lost? Well, this is a very strong tournament, uh, very. So one hour uh, passed, we played five rounds, four rounds left. Let's see. So you guys know already what I'm gonna play, it's gonna be London system. I'm not even looking at the standings because I know I'm way behind. I have like three draws, uh, way behind, but uh, you guys see this tournament with me. Uh, Vice President, I don't know which is worse than our outrageous. No comment about Nigel being Vice President. Uh, no comment. Um, he was Vice President in the Kasparov's Association earlier, right? So, I mean, he is not worse than the other guys that could have been at his place, so... Okay. Besides, um, it's not his fault that coronavirus happened, right? Can't really blame him for that. Okay. So a4. This is this is famous uh, trick that I learned. And now I can play a5 probably immediately. I don't should play this immediately. And now c4. This is a tricky position for Black. Uh, you probably guys saw me play this structure like a million times, but uh, this is. Uh, very dynamic structure, this is very unorthodox. Um, you get weak pawns, but you have potentially great square and b6 for your knight. And potentially great pass pawn here, because that a6 pawn might be weak. When you have queen e2, bishop d3, knight b6, right? So this is a very, very strange position, really. Um, I had huge problems trying to analyze it. I mean, I had to analyze this sort of position. And in the end, I came up with the conclusion that white is slightly more comfortable playing it this position, this type of position, because uh, simply Black uh, sort of has some problems with his uh, developing his pieces, okay? So um, so let's see what's gonna what's going on here. Um, knight b4 is probably a threat. Uh, queen b3 or what? Or what? If queen b3 then rook b8, on the other hand, um, queen b3 looks to be making sense, right? Sometimes I can put this queen on a3. Though I don't, I remember that this queen should not be in b3, yeah? It should not be here, it doesn't belong here. So, again, this is a very complex structure. I suggest you guys look at it if you want to play London System, because I think this is the best way for white to play it. I won some serious tournament games uh, with this structure. Last one being last year's uh, Grand Swiss against uh, Dura Bailey. Um, so, check it out, okay? Yeah. Um, so, what is black going to do? Knight cb4, knight db4, rook b8? I have no idea. Um, also, I like my bishop on d3, so I probably will be very reluctant to put him to commit that bishop either to b1 or to c1 diagonal. But again, um, nothing is certain. I just wanted to play queen a3 and hit this pawn on d6. Ah, but he plays knight b4, and I don't have this bishop f1 anymore. Hmm. Uh, or that, um, or that, yeah. So bishop b1, eww, this is such a lousy move to make. This is absolutely eh move to make. I don't like this move. Because my rook on a1 is now, s it sucks, to be honest, okay? It just sucks. This rook sucks. Yeah, I'm not very happy. So uh, probably queen e2 was the better square for the queen. At least I could have put it on e4, as I was saying earlier. Uh, usually I play this position with the black knight already being on d7. So a5 was too early, I should have played uh, maybe in 92 first, wait for that knight to go to d7, and only then uh, 
you know, do that stuff that I did. Okay, so knight b6, knight a5, bishop f3, takes on b6, I cannot allow that. Uh, let's get my queen back um, in game on a3. Uh, it's really, really bad queen. So, queen e3. My point is I'm trying to, you know, hamstring uh, black to this d6 pawn. If he plays d5, he opens my bishop and closes his bishop on b7. If he doesn't, then... Uh, then... I can think about uh, moves like queen h6, for example, and now I threaten take on d6 and knight g5, right? Ah, you have this tricky move. Um, ooh, that's interesting. Um, so no more knight g5, yeah? So let's play rook a3. Let us play rook a3 and see what is black next move going to be. Queen d2, make sure he cannot recapture on um, a5. Rook on h5, that's very imaginative move by black. I like his imagination. Very imaginative. Um, rook back to b5. Uh, he doesn't really want to take here. He does not. Um, on the other hand, do I, can I play knight b6? No, I don't want to play knight b6. Uh, there is a big problem with what can I do, yeah? So maybe queen f4, then knight a5. Hmm. Big problem. How about h4, h5? Uh, probably not good either. So let's play rook c1, because on e1 is doing absolutely nothing. On c1 at least it will be doing some sort of uh, play. Right? Open the file, etc, etc. So d5 makes sense. I play knight e5, of course. Uh, bring this. Now I can bring my queen to h6. And uh, bishop takes, then knight c6, so knight takes e5. And um, I didn't like that d5. Yeah, it just completely closed black's uh, rook f3, just starting to go for the attack, because rook on f3, my god, this rook is going to be huge. Um, I can even play... Ooh, just don't blunder h5... Um, something here, yeah? So bishop f4, put the bishop on h6, the threat is bishop h6, and if f6, I can actually think about playing knight g6, right? Um, so bishop h6, knight e5, um, ooh, knight g4, oh, a lot of moves here come to mind, so let's grab this, let's play bishop h6, let's play uh, queen f4, yeah, queen f4, we can that structure, uh, queen f4, and I also have um, bishop f5 now. Because it has to take this uh, thing, I take on c1. Well, you have to take on c1. Come on. And I take on c6. And I pin your rook on e8, and then rook goes to e3. Black is in serious trouble. Um, bishop g5. Ah, rook e1 check. Oh my god, he's tricky. Okay, so let's play rook e3 maybe instead, or bishop f8. Let's bishop f8. Uh, queen a6 or rook g4. Let's just go attack. Let's just open this guy up. Uh, queen d5. No, uh, my queen is hanging, right? So I cannot do this. Okay, I gotta probably take, take, and play this uh, end game check. Rook f5, of course. Rook takes. Uh, check. King g3. Try to play this position. I don't really like it. Uh, rook a6. Maybe rook d5 check. Let's hit this rook. Mm. Yeah, this looks like a draw, yeah? b4. This looks like a draw. But not anymore. Uh, because I have check. And I grab this tank, and I play rook a5, and I have two extra pawns. Take, and I have three extra pawns. Yeah, I have one second, that should be enough. h4, king comes, push the pawn. Yeah, his king is completely cut out, right? So just basically push the d-pawn. Push, 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 and then there is a bridge at some point. 
and of course white winds this white winds this there is a bridge there is nothing black can do um, h5 rook f5 and king c7 king c6 rook c5 which is a classical bridge rook d5 yep well if I didn't have a second, it would probably flag me a long time ago, right? Um, exciting with his position. Yeah, I mean, who? I mean, we'll all have to attack, right? Uh, we all have to attack. You guys saw. You just basically push all my pieces at his king. At some point, he created the weakness. I probably didn't play my best in that position. I probably could have found uh, without, you know, all those exchanges, uh, without that bishop f5 thing. There probably should have been something better than that. Uh, and then in the, in the rook end game when I played uh, f5, he should have attacked rook e4 immediately in my central pawn, which would have probably led to a drawing uh, rook end game. So um, that was uh, probably... Okay, wow, we have this exciting end game. Uh, draw. Draw in the... in this. Boom, 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 boom. White is slightly better, but black has uh, serious... Uh, this activity plus its opposite color bishop, so it is a draw. So, good game by both opponents, I believe. Uh, Jan Nipomnishi plays Sergoi. Draw. So, you see a lot of I am starting to take points from the. Oh, we have Arabic Falcon playing. I haven't seen him. And Sugiru playing Anish Giri. This should be fun. And, ooh. Hey, we already started playing. Oh my god, that was fast. Uh, would you recommend to face on the system? He was out of uh, these playing many inaccurate moves. Uh, the middle middle game was hard. Yeah, middle game was hard. Uh, I have to admit it. So uh, let's play normal London. Normal London system. Let's go. Normal London system. Bishop b5 and bishop b2. Okay, bishop b2. Nothing weird. Um, grab. Here, rook e1, a4, classical stuff. Hoping for an accurate move a6, because then I can play a5 and then get the c5 square for my pieces, right? So this sort of little trap, right? Um, a4, because if I get a5, queen a4, knight b4, knight b3, knight c5, then we get this Kalsbad thing going on, and um, then white is better, right? This is like famous trick. So queen b3. Uh, waiting for my opponent to make some decisions. Queen c7, pretty smart. Bishop f1, uh, sort of trying to play knight e5 at some point. Uh, and uh, the reason I play knight e5 is that I want to take on e5 with the pawn and get myself a nice square on d4 for my pieces, right? At the same time, um, this knight is gonna. Oh, okay, so I'll take this and play e5 now. This looks good. Because now my, guy, my knight goes to c5. If this knight ends up on c5, I am probably slightly better. I'm not saying I'm like mightily better, but I'm just slightly better, yeah? That's nice. Um, so if that knight gets to c5 and then I support him with my pawn on b4, that knight will be always hitting that b7, a6 uh, pawn chain. So black has to come up with something. So let's do that, knight b3. Uh, probably has to be played. Um, also, just in case black plays uh, something like e5, so we get the knight to c5, I'm very happy. Uh, this I probably just grab, and uh, just to make sure there are no knight g4 here, uh, there's like some tricks probably. Knight b3, knight d4 comes to mind, but um, h3, bishop h3, yeah? so that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I don't know. Probably should play just rook d1, just centralize the stuff here. Uh, so let's do that. Let's centralize the rook. I probably want to play b4 and um, get my queen to c1, f4 to the king side, a, s, a, b. So we're now looking to uh, just exchange everything and play the uh, for the bishop endgame, right? My bishop endgame should be incredible, right? With all those pawns and light squares. The thing is, uh, just try not to blunder stuff, yeah? So b4, as I said before, <laughs> uh, double pun. So this has to be played, g3. 
and he wants to play knight e4, which I can absolutely agree with. So let's play c4 probably. Let's play c4, get rid of my own weakness here. And he probably has to take. Bishop takes c4. Um, does it look good? Um, I don't know. Doesn't look good. I'll probably play bishop g2. Oh, bishop g2 looks fantastic. Uh, looks fantastic, absolutely. But that pawn on c4 is extra pawn. Nah. Okay, so let's grab this pawn back. Let's grab this pawn back. And let's just bring my queen, my wayward queen, back into the game. And we probably want to exchange this rook. And we want to bring our bishop back to g2, where he will attack that pawn on b7. Okay? That's what we want to do. Plus, the bishop on g2 will protect my king. And I like my position so far. Let's see what black comes up with. Mm, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic, yeah? Just a tiny bit too optimistic about my position. But hey, why not? So, bishop g2. So, I would say black has to play knight d7 or something like that, right? Black has to play this, bishop g2, then my pawns will be doubled. I don't like that. On the other hand, um, then yeah, he plays bishop d7, that will not be great. But if I change, uh, he gets rid of my very good knights, and I don't like that as well. So how about I play knight e4, and try, but then he plays knight e5, and then he gets his knight to f3, right? Mm. Alright, so let's play bishop g2. Uh, let's try to exchange the stuff. I mean, white is still slightly better here, always, now because of that superior structure. Bishop e6, he wants to trade the bishops, I guess. Um, let's play queen b4, attack this uh, pawn on b7, and this is a bad move because you blundered the whole rook. Rook e8, queen e4, check wins the rook. That was the second point behind queen b4, okay? So, see, it's always little trick strategy along with tactics, okay? Um, so, strategy along with tactics. Uh, I hate playing against London, you have a book for London. Said like book, guys. Uh, have you tried Jabba London? What's your opinion? No, I haven't tried it. I like my own London system. Um, maybe Jabba is good, but okay. So let's see what else we have here. Um, let's see. Oh, this is like big guns now playing each other finally. And they're afraid. These guys are afraid. They don't, They want to play safe. Oh, boo, you guys. Boo, you know, making short draws. Come on. Like, you know, it's just, a, it's just a tournament, guys. Take a break. Then, of course, I'm not playing uh, for money yet, so I have nothing to lose. So, you know, I don't know the situation. What is this? Jan play, play, playing some guy named Tesla. What is the opening? Sicilian. Jan is very good with Nidorf. He's been playing all his life. He later switched to French in his candidates. But I don't, I don't think French suits him really well. So he returns back to Nidorf. And he is doing... Pretty good here. He's got extra pawn, knight goes to c5, right? Knight takes this uh, e4 square away, then bishop goes to f4. Black should win this position. Knight e4, mm, maybe, but uh, okay, it's playable, I guess. Oh, we have Jeffrey, and we have Anish Giri playing. And Anish Giri is losing, guys, against the uh, I. Um, no, that's GM, right? But uh, what was this? Um, Giri losing with white, come on. When was the last time that happened? Okay, end game. Knight a4, brilliant move. C3 is unplayable. Knight rook c3. Look at those fireworks. Rook, look, look at all these fireworks. Rook e2. Look at this move. You have to see it in advance, otherwise black is just worse. And white pawns are just falling like leaves. Perfect, perfect play by black so far. Perfect. There's just no other word for it. Perfect realization. Black has to start rolling his pawns sometime in order to score the win. This is absolutely fantastic moves. It just simplifies the game to the simple knight and king versus um, great job by black. I, I would say that was a 90% accuracy game at least by black. Uh, he got to lose one. Um, when we're talking about the draws, okay, we see Hikaru playing black and he is lost again. He's absolutely lost because white just goes back. Wow. 
He lost two games, I think, here, yeah? Absolutely incredible. Uh, what was this game? What was this game? Who is this Santa Blue guy? Who are all these guys? You know, these all these guys. i never heard of these guys. Um, strategy, black looks okay. That point on C4 looks so, so, but look at this position. Looks very good for black. Uh, he should have probably taken a 4 played knight f5, but he decided to get maybe better. But of course white plays e5, and he plays now for this trick. Because black king is wide open, this dark square, yeah, this bishop is incredibly strong. So white definitely has compensation, and uh, Hikaru just blundered the queen, uh, the, the piece, right? He could have played, ah, he could not have played queen e7, so he blundered here. So d5 is a blunder, queen e6 should have been played. And then we transpose into this endgame and white just converted really well. Wow, what a game. Okay. Wow, I even sound like a true commentator for a second there. That's amazing, yeah? I'm, I'm doing all this wow, 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 thanks. And uh, yeah, but the games are incredible, you know, guys. Uh, I just think Nuki. Nuki sounds familiar. Who is this guy? Wow, look at that pretty mate in the end. Look at this pretty, pretty mates. Yeah, that's pretty. You remember, guys, there was this end game with two knights against the pawn, right? And though this uh, famous Troitsky line, and some positions uh, you win, some positions you draw. And the main trick to win is basically you create that mating net. And just the moment when that pawn queens, you, you deliver a mate. Um, turn on pre moves. So I sound like Maurice Ashley. No, I don't sound like Maurice Ashley. I mean, um, okay, maybe a little bit, yeah, like, I'm going boom. I think uh, Maurice Ashley likes to talk about, like, boom stuff, yeah, like, uh, street fighting stuff, that's, uh, that's his, uh, yeah, football commentator, yeah, a little bit, yeah, I guess. Actually, he's very entertaining, I have huge respect for Maurice, I mean, after all, he's uh, the first African-American GM in history, right? Um, there were some other guys, I think, after that. Uh, but I am not exactly 100% sure, so if you guys like mention in the chat the other GMs who achieved uh, the title from African American um, or you know that descent, uh, so just let me know. That'll be cool. Uh, favorite subject is Maurice Ashley. Well, okay. Who isn't? Who doesn't like to talk about himself? Famous freaking legends. That's freaking, eh? Um, okay, maybe. You can do the uh, this version too, but I prefer freaking. Um, so, um, where's my game? Dude, where's my game? I want to play. I feel like... Uh... Alright, there we go. So, I played like so many white games here. Um, what's going on? Oh, five minute break has started. Come on, guys, that is so bad. You know, I'm on the roll here. You know, I noticed when I'm on the roll and suddenly there is a break, boom. It just completely destroys my role, and um, you have to be really careful. I just noticed in chess, especially. Have you guys noticed? You go, you're doing really well, and then there is a break, and then boom, it your luck runs out. Or the other situation, right? You were losing, and then this break comes. Like everybody is waiting for this break when the, they're like having a bad streak, because then things may, might turn around, and you can start winning. You could watch our team of dude. Okay, let's watch our team of dude. So what's going on in our team of dude game? What is going on? Um, come on, guys. Invitational. More points than Naka? Nah, I doubt, I doubt it. So, let's see. Uh, let's see the game. So, it's Woo. <laughs> wow, look at this match. Uh, I don't see them. I don't see them playing. So, what is the score so far? Wait, 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 wait. What is the score? I'm messing up my uh, tran tran transmission. Oh, there you go. There you have the game. And Artemis is playing this... Uh, ah, he's playing this thing. Right. Okay, so this looks like a pretty decent position. F uh, wait, wait, wait. Rookie 1. Yeah, so this is uh, slightly better for white, but uh, black should be okay. Uh, he should be going for massive exchanges, basically, and... Um, uh, when I eat food, it makes me lazy and less predator instincts. Um, that is true. Do you know why? Because um, when you take, when you get food, yeah, uh, it requires energy to 
to sort of like uh, process it, right? That means your stomach starts uh, to get that workload and uh, where, where that energy comes from. It has to come from somewhere so your brain starts to give up some of that priority stuff. So queen c2, interesting. Um, so maybe, um, I don't know, mm, 97, yeah? And 97, but then bishop g5, so that's not so clear. H5, I don't, I don't really want to play because of bishop g5 here. So, um, our team is actually a minute behind. It's not a great sign. I'll probably suggest something simple like bishop d7, and then queen e7, queen f8. Uh, 97 has been played. The idea is to play knight d4 and exchange this knight on f5. Because, again, black is cramp. Uh, but, um, so when you have a cramped position, you need to change pieces. You need air to breathe uh, for the rest of the pieces, right? So bishop g5, let's see. Wow, look at that trick. That is an uh, interesting trick. Bishop d8, knight takes c2, but bishop c7, knight takes a1, rook a1, bishop c3, rook takes e2. Okay, that sounds pretty decent. Uh, queen d2 now, black, however, have to take on f3. And he can just play bishop f6, I guess. Oh, but he cannot play bishop f6. Uh, he cannot do that. Um, so, uh, what is the plan? Black can actually get two bishops, right? He can take on e2. And I didn't like this. He should have taken probably that bishop on e2 and then played f6. And go for that f5, knight c5, that two bishop pair of bishops thing. Um, so, so that, that's pretty interesting. Bishop f6 is also very interesting. Uh, but if white takes on f6... Ah, then knight f3, bishop f3, knight f6. Basically, this is completely even position, right? And if uh, white avoids the exchange, then of course black takes on e2. So this is this is pretty interesting. Um, okay, the break is games are about to resume, so we are going to close that window. We have some messages here. We're not going to click on them. And uh, the, we have only two games left. After that, we're pro probably going to go to watch some a little bit more of that Artemiev action. And let's see. So, um, my goal for this tournament is to play very, very solid chess. Very solid chess. You know, try not to lose a single game. Draw is good, you know, just to uphold my image as the solid dude. Okay? I'm a solid dude. I want to be a solid dude. So... Let's go for this. Um, e3. The solid dudes play g6 here. Hmm. Okay. Um, but then again, yeah. Because Karl Schlechter, he was very solid dude, right? Uh, by the way, was he for also from Poland? I, I thought he was from Poland, right? Um, yeah, we when the time gets there, I will do this. Um, I will cover his Lasker versus uh, Karl Schlechter match, right? That was that was uh, that should be very interesting. Yeah, I'm 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 trying to be very solid, dude. Okay, and I suggest you guys try to be very solid, solid dudes too. Okay, so we're gonna make a shirt, t-shirt, and we just say I'm a solid dude. Okay, so that's that's uh, what we're we gonna do. Uh, okay, queen a7, preventing all those tricks. So a5, knight b6. Uh, sort of trying to see if a4 that's gonna work stuff or not. Basically, I'm just basically I'm just trying to provoke white into playing c5, and then uh, so I can go for that e5 thing. Um, so queen a6, probably not a good idea, but okay, let's play knight d7. I'm not in a rush. I'm pretty happy. I'm a solid dude. I'm happy with the draw. Um, a4, a3 looks interesting. Let's play knight e8. Sort of trying to open my bishop here. Okay, um, a4 looks pretty solid to me right now. So, because I need to open some lines here, so let's do that. Queen b6. Um, you know, ladies, rooks first, right? So let's do that. Let's do that. And okay, um, I don't know this guy, I never played him before. I'm trying to be solid. Uh, you play the, like Capablanca. Dude, that's like the greatest compliment they can give me. That's like definitely one of the greatest compliments. So let's play rook a2. 
I mean, we got the A file, right? Now it's uh, probably a good time to just like, you know, double stuff there. Um, okay, grab this, and we can probably grab this pawn on C4. I mean, it's in price, right? So uh, why not? Pawn. We uh, got a spawn grabbers, right? Okay, that's another t-shirt in the making. I'm Gara's loyal pawn grabber. Okay. So, queen c7. Now, this knight is going to b5 to block the... Um, oh, so he doesn't let me block this thing. Um, I can play e5 now, but I really don't want to open the position. So, let's play um, knight f6. I don't want to play knight f6, to be honest. So, we have some time here. Let's think about it for a second. I really need to open this bishop, so let's do play e5. Um, I need to open this bishop so that uh, the bishop and knight uh, sort of can, you know, join the game. Um, and thank you for the donation. See, that knight is uh, serving useful function, right, after all? So that was a uh, young dude, uh, based on his picture, he is younger than me. He is blundering and giving, giving me a whole piece, right? Uh, pawn is a pawn, right? Um, if it is a healthy pawn, you see, it, it didn't ruin my pawn structure, right? Why not? Uh, I like that. Okay, so again, let's take a look at some other games. Um, what is going on? Oh, Young versus Jeffrey. This is fun. But Jeffrey, of course, is losing to the experience. Young has massive experience. Guys, 95. This is often overlooked thing. This is good thing. Uh, I know th th this is all theory, right? This is like huge three theory here, bishop a5 and etc. And uh, there have been like massive games played here. Corana played this line, I think, was black. So this is uh, absolutely crazy line. Ah, uh, see this? Ah, rook g5. Both bishops are hanging. That's how he got the bishop, right? Rook f3, rook b5. White is winning. Technical win. So let's go next game. Oh no, I don't want to close the tournaments. Arabic Falcon, Grishuk versus Viridov. The Viridov dude is pretty good. But I believe in Grishuk. I think Grishuk is stronger. So this is a pretty standard. Uh, I don't think it's actually standard now. Wow, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Uh, why, uh, wait, okay, a5 looks reasonable, yeah, but you you spend a lot of time playing this move. And now that knight on the 3 is hanging, and black basically just got central pawn. And the question is, uh, can white do something, but, ah, okay, there is this uh, thing right there. Ah, but there is queen h3 coming, right? Or queen c6, tricky, right? Rook takes e5, rook takes e5, bishop takes e5, simply queen c6. And white is uh, probably has to give up the whole rook, right? So rook takes, bishop takes, queen c6. Come on, man, you can do it, right? White has to play f3, queen f3, and queen f1, queen e3 check, queen takes e5. Plenty of compensation for black for sure. Queen f3 is just a draw. Actually, it's not a draw because white has king e1. Oh, it, it is a draw, right? Queen e3, queen e2, queen g1 check, forcing white to play queen f1. And it is a draw, and this guy, national master, he's national master, right? He makes a draw with the with the Grishuk himself. Wow, that that is fantastic game. That is uh that is what you should guys look for. Absolutely, in wow, Grishuk is playing for a win. He doesn't want to accept the draw. And let's see, g6 is the only move. Ah, there is queen d7, queen e8 mates. Ah, wow, 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 wow. And white is winning. Counter! See those tricky, tricky bishops. White is winning. Wow, look at this. So, so this is actually winning. So you see Black's mistake was here. He should have uh, played queen e3 check, take on e5, and he has three, and he has two pawns and um, open white king. Instead, he goes here and look at this incredible uh, turnaround, right? Queen d7, it's made in two, five, whatever. Black king. Black Queen is far away and um, incredible performance. Um, yeah, this is incredible. Um, what a turnaround. Uh, Billy Dilla, that's this is the wild card for the um, Alexeyenko, right? This is the wild card for the candidates. So he is doing 
not good. He is not doing not good. Um, what was this? It was Spanish Steinitz, good old Steinitz. He's playing this platy dude, platy dude, right? I thought this dude was um, um, on Lee Chess, right? I, isn't this the same guy who won the tournament on Lee Chess? I'm not sure. So basically, just piece up, no compensation. Wow, guys, look at this! Look at this! This is incredible! Oh my god, this is such a cheapo! Come on, guy! Come on, guy, this is a draw! Guys, never resign! You see this? <laughs> never resign! After this game, you should never resign, okay? You should just never resign. Look at this! White automatically plays rookie 8, <laughs> draw! Wow, what a save! What a save, why? <laughs> oh my god, come on. This is just incredible. Yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. It, that's a very... See how fun this tournament is? Now, get your titles and get to this tournament. Right? Get your titles, guys. Come on, so we can play here. Um, but that is, this is absolutely incredible. I mean, you can... Next game you can have is you can play Grishuk and uh, play the game of your life and uh, make uh, something absolutely incredible. Um, Queen, Irina, there is no lack of uh, self-interest right there, okay, um, hmm, okay, what's the score in the Artemia versus uh, Duda, somebody knows, uh, welcome to the channel, uh, thank you guys, uh, you know, so far we have seen a lot of pretty games, right? So uh, somebody tells me the score, that would be really nice. So we are... Um, I should be somewhere around here. 7 out of 8. Woo, not bad. Not bad. 7 out of 8. Look at the storm. Someone, an Arabic Falcon has 8 out of 8. With 3 guys losing only half a point right behind him. I'm actually having the same score as Grishuk. Ooh. Go! Go stream team! Right? Um, yeah, and not only that Agard book, he actually has a bunch of very great books, training books, etc. I would highly recommend. Yeah? I mean, he the way he writes that stuff is just, uh, you know, much more, much simpler than the Dvoretsky stuff. Just let's, let's be honest there, okay? Dvoretsky is a great teacher, has great material, but the way he, he, he explains so many lines is like, you know, my god, it's like very difficult. But Agard is like, you know, anybody can get that point he's trying to make and has a lot of, uh, it's just, those are good books, okay? Okay, where is my opponent? I'm gonna probably be a big boss. The big boss, the Bruce Lee's first movie, right? Oh my, okay, let's take a look at this game. This is, this is important. This is uh, your technique in this endgame. Okay, uh, I think black, I'm not sure about this exact, uh, I think this is one of those uh, hard to break uh, defensive uh, structures, right? So white should play probably bishop e3, trying to break it. Some point, bishop e3 here was, uh, I think was uh, pretty strong, immediately. King f3, hello, what are you doing? Ah, rook f2, right, 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 right. This is... Guys, rook f2 check. This is the famous defensive trick here. Um, right. Because you cannot capture rook of stalemate. Okay. Do the... Let's get one more game. Good luck. I'm not in time to click on their game. Because this game is the only one left. And um, immediately after this... Uh, yeah, so I don't think white makes any progress here at all. Yeah, this should be, yeah, bishop b3, I, th I thought bishop b3 was more uh, to the point. Yeah, okay, three time repetition, this should be a draw. This should be a draw. Okay, 4-4, four, four. wow, a great match. And king e2. Yeah, so this is one of the famous uh, defensive postures by Black. 
really hard to break. Um, I personally, I don't like to get uh, to this point at all. I like to get my rook behind and keep my king like along the 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 fourth rank. Because once you get the sort of the Fildor sort of position, then it's really difficult to survive. Draw by repetition. Incredible good performance by Black. Two FMs playing. Good game, guys. Good game. Very instructive end game. Okay, so I'm playing. Of course, I'm playing the guy who also plays London a lot. Yeah. So I'm playing this guy. I forgot what's what was his name. Uh, yeah, he's a cool dude too. All right, so okay, let's let's still play this. Let's still play London system. Andreken, right? Exactly. So ninety two. I'm actually gonna play the safe system against him. I'm gonna play ninety two stuff and e four. And if he takes, I'm gonna grab, take and play bishop e three. That's what I'm gonna do. That is what I'm going to do. Just put the bishop here and play a safe way. Um, queen c2. a4. a5 then. Okay, he wants to play knight c5, I guess. Uh, so I cannot play a5 then, right? Um, I don't know. a5, a6, bishop b4. Ah. Okay, so yeah, okay, so nice c5 is a kind of threat, yeah. It is kind of a threat. It is kind of a threat. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to play bishop d3. I don't want to play bishop uh, d3, but okay, so let's play a5. Let's do this. I'm actually thinking about playing knight g5 here. This kind of goes against the instinct, yeah. The idea is to play h6, b4, but... Uh... Alright, it's interesting. Let's try it. Let's try knight g5. Let's try knight g5. Uh... Because I got this important pawn on a5, that means I can later kick this knight out of c5. If I can do that, I should be maybe slightly better, but if uh, he succeeds in uh, so b4, rook d2, I guess. Okay, that's what he wants. Sacrifice here. Mm, I guess some sort of. I don't want to play f3, obviously. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, so let's play maybe bishop c4 first. Uh, but then he plays rook d2 anyway. I like this bishop c4. So let's play bishop c4. Uh, let's develop the bishop. Okay. So we're trying to be creative here. Um, yeah, sometimes the old ways are better. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe you are right. In fact, maybe you are right, period. Yeah. Because there's the sack on d2. I'm starting not to like it at all. Not to like it at all. But then I take with the queen, probably, yeah. Queen takes. Then if knight e4, knight e4, knight e4. My bishop on c4 is sort of cool guy. So he wants to play knight f4. Uh, probably I should just castle here. And he plays bishop uh, h6, I guess. So that's his point. Knight of three, knight of four. Mm. And if I play b4 here, then what do you do? Because if you play knight of four, I can just uh, grab a take on f7, take on c5, right? That should be a good deal for me, I think. Probably. Maybe. I don't like knight h5. Um, maybe he can get away with it. But I think, okay, 97, now he really wants to do something. Um, he wants to play bishop h6, I guess. So let's bring the knight back. And he plays knight f4, and just ignores this guy and just casts on finish development. 
Yeah, now white should be okay because I have AB7, rook A7 threat coming. Right? Rook on the 7th will, will tie up his pieces like really badly. And um, this knight on a 4 is cute, but uh, he's not doing much. So basically I got what I wanted. I got away with the position. Uh, I got away with it, so let's just grab it. Maybe. Or oh, rookie 1 first. Okay, rookie 1 first. Prepare potentially take on f4 and play 5, e6 even. So I, I like white's position. Kind of like my position now. Looks pretty normal. Okay, so let's grab the, this thing. Let's play rook a7 anyway. I like active rooks. Um, and I'm sort of trying to get his rook away to a8 so I can play bishop f4 followed by e5 and then just go berserk. Uh, so that's my plan. And if I take this guy and play e5, hello, Andrekin, where's your tactical sense? He just bundled the piece, yeah? Wow, dude. Thank you for the piece, man. Yeah, that was that was that was very strange, yeah. Wow. Come on. And Draken, he was like a top blitz player in the world, like just a couple of years ago. Yeah, now he he just uh, blundered the whole piece. But uh, to be honest, this position is already slightly better, right? So he messed up somewhere earlier. Everybody blundering today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are done with this tournament, so let's go to critical last four games of do the Artemiev match. Um, I probably like on the 10th place or something, so that's pretty good for me, I think. So let's see. Let's go here. Uh, you should guys also uh, go to this uh, place, right? You see this uh, where I, how I got there? And you should watch to the commentators. I mean... Um, and you should listen to me, so you get the, bo the best of both uh, best of both worlds, right? So I see Artemiev uh, actually doing okay. Um, a five. What was the opening? Again, they discussing this um, English stuff. Uh, Black should be pretty comfortable. He has slightly worse uh, pawn structure, but. Um, Bishop takes g2, king takes g2, knight takes d4, rook takes d4, a, b, a, b. Uh, black is, uh, should not be af uh, afraid because he's got this very, very strong a file for his rook. Uh, sh shared second? There is no way I get shared second. There is no way. Ooh! Are you kidding me? You guys gotta be kidding me. I'm shared second? Come on! And I was streaming, right? Wow. Okay. Yeah, we get like 30 bucks. I mean, it's a lot of money, of course, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's nice. Um, okay, rook a3. I don't like this. Um, I think black just should make a draw here. He is a point up, if you guys are correct, right? Uh, Artemis is a point up. He should just make a draw with white, uh, with black, and then go and go play with white, you know? Um, but again, these are fighters. I know Artemi is a great fighter, you know. So um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, knight c6, b6, c5. Black gets the superior pawn structure. Way to go. c5. Come on, man. You can find this move. c5. You need to you need to put that pawn on c5, or you're worse. Um, because that that is like kind of bad pawn structure. After c5, black pawn structure is uh, just just good. Um, rook d3. What is he thinking about? He has more time. You know, I don't think that... Do they, you guys know if these guys have um, increment? Let me know, okay? Because um, increment is, is huge here. Uh, rook e... They, they have increment, yeah. right? But rook e8, you allow b4, man. You just allow white to play b4 and... Um, nah, come on. And after b4, white might be better. Because if white plays b5... Uh, that means the black, those three, this minority attack, it's like Carlsbad, right? Those pawns are weak and uh, black will be forced to defend them. After c5, it is completely equal. In fact, black should be better because that b3 pawn is weak, okay? But after b4, you know, he probably counts on this move, but I don't really like it. I mean, white can just play rook b3 followed by b5 at the very least. Um, or he can play even c5, and if d5, then rook d4, and black pawn on c6 and c7 are absolutely horrendous. Dude, uh, he just misplayed the structure, like, really. Uh, 
what is white missing? Why do, why why do we, the why the evaluation went down suddenly for white? Is there tactics? Uh, maybe queen f5, uh, h5, or I don't know what, what I'm what I'm not seeing. Uh, why is light square weakness not bad after c5? Um, um, I don't know. Okay, uh, these things are happening very fast. See that rook on f4 now. Queen e5 must be played, and you know you need to keep control of that long diagonal, right? So white's idea. Ooh, queen f3. Um, look, hoping for f5 because black. What is this queen f3? Yeah, like white is really provoking uh, those weaknesses, right? So f6 or f5, rook f8. I don't know. I don't know. Um, if I play f6, then white can play e4, right? Although after e4, that rook on f4 will be kind of funky. But f5 is now g4. Is um, is um, mm. I would play h4 first, you know, just to make sure, you know, that uh, gets pawned to h4. Of course, black will probably play rook a1, try to exchange the uh, rook to e4. Very solid. Very solid by white. Um, white is also planning to play b5 and take on d5. So that is very interesting. Uh, rook a2, now b5. I, I, I would think probably b5 is the best move now. Um, g4. Both players are really long time. Rook f8 sounds good. Gf, gf. Black king is kind of more loose than white king, to be honest. Um, kind of more loose. Um, Queen g3, hoping for tricks, uh, hoping for those um, little tricks somewhere. Very tricky. I don't like rook on a2 anymore, to be honest. Rook should be on e8 here. And Artemiev, he might just lose on time. Um, just probably take on g king h8, very passive. Very, very passive. Uh, see, king goes back, right? Um, g5, h5, queen g3, probably... Hoping for the draw. Um, wow, could I make the board bigger? This board, uh, I don't know how I can make it bigger. I'm sorry, I just don't know how to make it bigger. Uh, I'm only can see it on the um, the way it is there. That's the only way I can see it. H5 now, King G2, fine. Rook E7 maybe, Rook E7, right? But then Queen C8, Rook F7, ugh. And queen d7 check and white uh, wins the pawn. But there is queen e4 check, of course. Uh, queen e5 check back. A lot of checks coming up in the queen endgame. White is better, much better. Uh, let us hope that there is a perpetual. White should have played probably f3. And now it is a perpetual because queen d1, queen g4, and black makes a draw. f3 should have been played. Uh, Duda makes an inaccuracy. And this is a draw. So Artemiev uh, escapes. Uh, right. I mean, you, you guys should probably just also uh, open this uh, page, right? And then you can make whatever board size you want. I mean, uh, I can do only so much here. Um, what else? Um, so what is the total score so far? So it is uh, Duda, 1-1. One, one. Um, oh, they're already playing, right? And we see... Uh, call the system, right? It's now call the system. Very solid for white. Bishop f6. Uh, bishop f6 and... Wow, I like this move, bishop f6, right? Because black now forces the exchange on d4. Unless white is ready to play knight a4 here. Knight a4 and uh, capture on c5. But probably not the greatest idea. Um, so maybe rook c1. C takes d4, knight takes c4, d takes c4, knight takes d4. Just go into the end game, make a draw. Because uh, which what game was this? Um, this was like game number. Yeah, exactly. So this this looks like pretty drawish. Pretty drawish. Uh, if uh, Artemiev is uh, leading with the score, then he should not be afraid. So let's see here. What is the score? One for Duda. Two for Duda. Plus one equal plus one for Artemio, right? This is game number eleven. I believe they play fourteen games, although I'm not sure. Or oh, there was some first guy to score some amount of points here. Uh, rook c seven now. Rook d eight allows rook c seven and bishop c four, and then rook d seven, right? Okay, so rook c um hmm. Rook c seven is extremely interesting, but probably just rook f d one. And f3, right? Just 
you know, play solid chess, maybe. I would, I would consider it. Um, try the hamburger menu, those three lines to make it bigger. Hamburger menu. You mean this one? Uh, settings, right? Something like this. Oh, okay. My wife says I can press control and plus. Uh, like this, yeah? This is better? Okay. Does this look better? Uh, yes, yes, it's bigger. It is bigger now, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, rook c7, probably rook d, but I, I, I think rook c8 might be played because uh, active spilling, right? Rook b7, rook c2. Uh, so rook c8 might be kind of unpleasant for white. Rook d7 is kind of chicken move. I thought that rook c8 was more accurate because rook d7, rook c2, you get the a2 pawn anyway, but and you also get the rook on the second. Because after rook d7, it just looks like a draw. Yeah, white, white should probably just take on d7, play f3, and uh, just looks like a draw. Because I thought, uh, personally, I think that black was slightly, slightly worse. All right, better? Okay, great. Great. I uh, hope you guys uh, like this window better. Uh, you also see the chat, right? Uh, there is a chat here. Uh, okay. So, Artemiev is down low on time. He's actually one minute behind, which is huge. This is huge. F3, good. Ah, but E3. Now, of course, there's a question of E3. I don't think it should be that dangerous. But it is something to be concerned about. Because if black can manage to support this pawn with F5, F4, white might be in for a lot of hurt, right? Okay, so he plays safe. Bishop takes, rook B8. Now white is better. Rook C1. Rook c1, rook c7. You, don't, you must not even think about such moves. Just play them automatically. Rook c1, rook goes to c7, knight king f2. Right. If black plays rook c8, there is rook c5. Ah, rook c8. Ah. I might be bad. I might be mistaken, yeah. yeah. Okay, but this still looks pretty drawish. Just make sure white plays b4, a3. And puts the pawns on the dark squares. Please put the pawns on dark squares. H4, nice move. B4, A3, come on. B4, what are you doing, dude? B4, oh, you get fixed with bishop e6, so black is better. You gotta play B4. You must play B4. In these positions, you have to play B4. So H6, B4, good, okay. Draw. Should be draw now. Uh, black will play f5, g5, and he'll try to go for that f4 break. Uh, but he, he has to have this his king on d5 then, because if uh, you if black manages to play f4, um, then black is better. So so maybe my, my suggestion rook c1 automatic move was not that great. Was not that great. So king f6, of course. Um, Hmm. Bishop e4 is probably not that great, although bishop e4 is very interesting, but endgame is probably better for black, yeah? Probably better. So just, yeah, just make a draw, just move back and forth, book and back and forth. Yep. Looks like a draw to me. 86 people on the channel, so let's see how did I do here. Tournament over. Arabic Falcon wins. Um, and... Um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see how many people are sharing second place? One, two, three, four, five, six. Incredible. Six people. Um, seven. That's uh, seven people, including the second uh, second dude, right? Um, yeah, this should be a draw. Just white have to be careful uh, not to allow black king to get to d5 to the queen side, right? So... Um, should be it should be draw still yeah okay I don't see any 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 ways for black to break through so bishop e4 yeah you can grab that pawn fine king e3 just king e3 back probably stay safe um, bishop f3 I don't like but it is playable I guess just bishop e4 bishop f3 back 
Black wants to play a king c6 and try to get his king to b5, I guess. That would, that's what he wants to do. And um, back and forth, back and Oh my god, you're missing king b6, man. King b6 and then king b5. Uh, so his plan was to meet king b6 with king e5 and then uh, try to push that deep one, right? Okay. So black will play this position for quite a while. He has more time to think. Uh, white should just push his bishop around. You finished above Naka, Giri, Grishuk, and tied with Nepal Impressive. Um, well, things like that happen sometimes, yeah? So black plays f5 now, followed by g5, I guess. And the question is, uh, what is white going to do? But on the other hand, with the limited number of pawns on the queen side, uh, white probably should not be afraid of that f4 break anymore, because you just take on f4. Uh, you give up that bishop for the a pawn, and uh, you make a draw. Simple as that. Because the a, a1 is the wrong color for the bishop. So dude is going to go for f5. Um, g5, f5, I guess. It's not so easy for, for black to play f5, yeah? Not so easy. So draw, king e3, king e6. Make that f5. You gotta play f5. I mean, what else can you do? You have play. And now white just puts his bishop on c2, b1. Because black... Ooh, c8. Ambitious. Bishop a6. Bishop should be back on d3. If king g6 and g4, okay. Uh, bishop c2, yeah, king g6. No, not scary. So bishop um, d5. No, not d5, right? d5 is not good. Okay, so bishop just back and forth. Bishop d3, bishop b1, bishop d3, bishop c2. Bishop b1, king d5, or bishop c2. King d5, bishop b3, check. Black cannot improve. Now bishop b3. Bishop b1, yeah. Black cannot improve, period. Um, right. It's amazing that these guys play it out, but uh, okay. It is a dead draw. Bishop b1. Bishop c2. Bishop b1 again. Uh, the whole point is to keep black king on t5. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. pawn sack. Come on. White can only better now be. Bishop c2, d5. Just play d5. Just give him the spawn. You know, don't worry about it. Just play d5. Right, good. You can play king d2. Like, same thing. And, and king d2, bishop a2, bishop a2, king c2, king b2, draw. Yeah. Wow, look at these guys. Yeah, they're they, they playing out this position. I mean, like, <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. These guys are grandmasters playing out this position. I'm not Yoda. Although it's a compliment. I appreciate it. Yeah. Draw. Agree. You must. Huh? <laughs> okay. Bishop. Keep. Strong. A2. Hmm. Yeah. Black. Force was strong, huh? this game. Yes, it was. Okay, so um, what's going on? Great, great, uh, we see great games here. Um, this is game number 12. It's actually amazing that our team came back from the minus two deficit, yeah? Uh, oh, what is this? This is probably Karakan. This is Karakan. Yes, it is Karakan with uh, EF6. Artemis is actually playing this very dangerous system. Um, structurally, it is very dangerous. White gets superior structures like Berlin, right? Except that uh, Black has no compensation for it. I am not sure why he decided to play this. He was point up. He should play something more solid. Um, I don't know. Very strange uh, opening choice, but okay. Um, f5, knight f6. No, I, 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 in general, I, I dislike these positions uh, for both colors. Extremely difficult to play. Extremely. 
Um, good. Next game is a must win for Duda. Why? Is it only 12 game match? Um, I thought it was 14 game. Maybe I'm wrong. Ooh, White is setting up uh, that d5 kill thing. Yeah. A6 probably must be played, but then d5, bishop e2, bishop e2. See that bishop g4. No, but somebody, for some reason the computer says that queen a4 was bad. I don't get it. Why is it bad? Why is this bad? Explain to me, please, uh, somebody. Really? So it's only 12 game match. Yeah, I see. I didn't know that. Okay, so um, I'm rooting for Tammy because I know this guy personally. I don't know uh, this uh, dude guy at all. I didn't like that bishop e2. I didn't like that. Why has pair of bishops, superior pawn structure, ich, just ich, and and that bishop c4, nah. I have a feeling Artemiev might lose this one. Bishop f3, knight d5, and then oh f5 f4, of course. No, but f5 f4, f5 f4. No, you really, black needs to keep this position closed, right? Because those uh, pair of bishops are monsters, especially the light squared bishop on f3. It's just bloody monster. I think c4 will now be will now be extremely strong because if c5 then take take and bishop f4, bishop d6, rook takes d6, right? And then that bishop will be just a bloody strong bishop. Um, bishop g5 was kind of a waste of time because uh, black can now play knight d5. Uh, on the second thought, um, probably black has to play king a8 at some point. King a8 just to get that king to safety. I mean, it's not clear whether it is very safe, but bishop e2, that was absolutely terrible move by Artemiev. He just gave up such an important bishop. Uh, that was not... That was not great. Um, c5, hello? c5, uh, bishop f4, yeah? Bishop f4, bishop d6, dc5. I see, that's trick. Nice trick. Um, yeah, Artemiev is uh, probably going to lose this game. Probably. I would try to play queen e6 with black here. Try to set my queen there, but I don't see any, any way how to do this. Just bishop on f3, better structure. White can take all the time in the world. He's trying to bring the rook basically to b3. First he's playing rook d1. And then he's trying to bring that rook to b3. Queen c2, c4, rook b3, bishop b3. And then c5, d5 starts all that uh, funny business. Black has no counterplay at all. No counterplay at all. This is really bad, uh, bad position for Vlad. Rook d7. Why did Artemiev play such a risky opening and decisive game? I have no idea. Uh, ask him, okay? Yeah, ask him because this is definitely not what he wanted to get when he played this opening. C5 just loses now, yeah? Dc5. Rook d3. Queen d8. Mm. Black's only hope is that uh, he can uh, try to blockade something, but I don't think white will make a mistake. So knight probably has to go to c8 at some point, to d6 and e4. If black can put that knight on e4, I can start to believe in his position a little bit, but not before that. So you see how Duda just basically applies pressure, he has better structure, uh, more pressure, and uh, more time. Uh, this is uh, not a good uh, way for me. Uh, this is just basically 1-0. This is 1-0. This is d5, c5, d6, right? Uh, and then bishop takes c5, probably wins. Um, I don't know, c5, just don't play c5 and allow black to play knight d5 here. So just don't do not do that. So I'm pretty sure they're thinking about d5 now. d5, c5, d6, queen e6. And then uh, it's a pleasant choice for white between uh, taking on c5, playing bishop d5. Take on c5, yeah, d5 is probably good. But now bishop takes b6 just wins, right? Bishop takes b6, the easiest win in the game. Bishop takes b6, 
Queen takes b6, rook a3, mate check. Ha. Black is lost. Just lost. And he plays c5, which is also pretty good. Knight c4, queen takes c4, rook takes d7, resigns. Yeah. And bishop f4. Well, yeah. So uh, yeah. So this was absolutely great performance by Duda. So um, wow. Artemy playing. Artemy playing this line with black when he needs a draw. Whoa. Dude's got issues. That's for sure. Rook b7, bishop b7. Anything wins here. Uh. Rook b7 is the simplest, of course. And. Yep. Yeah. That is made. Take, take. All this immediately. Yeah. Black has no counterplay at all. No counterplay. Mm -hmm. I don't see a single chance here. Not a single chance. Rook a7, rook a8, mate. Yep. So that should be probably a uh, tiebreaker now. Yeah. So it's gonna be an Armageddon. It's gonna be an Armageddon. Uh, and I'm probably missing the game already. They started. Yeah. Okay, Artemi playing double Fianchetto. Uh, knight c3. What's going on? c takes d5. d4, bishop f6, e4, I guess. Yeah, that's the plan. Oh, so okay, so just the exchange. And if black draws, I think he wins the match, right? Welcome, welcome to the channel. Queen d2. Must be played, but then means knight f4 and queen c2. Ah, but okay. Alright, so. <laughs> Oof, okay. Bishop f6. Oh, there is bishop f6. Bishop f6, queen f6, gf, queen a1, knight c3. Alright, this is also not bad, yeah? I'll, I'll, okay, but this endgame is uh, actually slightly better for white, right? Because knight goes to c4, knight d6, standard Catalan tank. So maybe some chances for white, although probably not many. Probably not many because knight a5, bishop c3. So um, I don't know, 95, yeah, 95. Hope for the best, but um, I don't know. Uh, it looks pretty drawish to me. That means that um, black holds the match and probably wins uh, because he is playing black. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think these guys were pretty cheap, you know, they, what they made, you know, they invited top players and they supplied only two prizes, right? So you have basically, uh, what, see, uh, how many players did they have? They had eight players, I think, maybe more, no, they had 16 players, right? So the losers, they didn't get a single cent, right? And they spent uh, like uh, two hours playing a uh, match against stronger position. I think this is just uh, greedy. Um, Camp Town races sing the song. Do the do the Camp Town race track five miles long. They keep playing blitz games until one player scores a win. Are you sure? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they played Armageddon uh, in the previous match. Somebody I saw somebody play Armageddon. Um, don't remember who. But maybe they changed the um, regulations for the for this match. Yeah. Okay. Nope, they're not paid. You get only two prizes uh, in this tournament. So the guys who get into the finals, only they get paid. Okay? Um, on the tab below, maybe. Um, Alright, but if I'm again, why did they start with it? Yeah, okay, so I'm wrong. I apologize. Uh, I'm wrong. I don't like e3. I think it's a waste of time. Should have probably taken on d8 and played rook c1, but again, I'm not the top player anymore. I cannot get into the, their heads, yeah? Okay. Yeah, now black should be comfortable because uh, black king walks to e7 and this looks like completely equal. 
So rook d1, king e7. Ah, king e7, bishop b7. No, there is no such trick, right? Bishop b7, because it's bishop takes, rook d7, king e8, rook f7, bishop f6. Uh, yeah, not enough. Not enough compensation. Probably it should just degree and a draw here, not try your fate too hard. Uh, I think. Uh, okay, what do you think is more like to take the VC title from Magnus? Um, you know, last time Karana looked very impressive. He, he looked like he was the only one. But in, in these candidates, he is kind of shaky. People already know he's dangerous, so they prepared for him. So, um, I'm not sure. Uh, who's gonna win the candidates this time? Um, besides, in the last match also, it was clear that uh, if Magnus... Is, Corana gets to the tie breaks. Corana has absolutely no chance at all. His uh, blitz game and rapid games are notoriously much worse than his classical games. So um, that is one thing. Um, but again, see, two years is a lot of huge time. I mean, uh, for younger guys like even Duda, like even Firuza, yeah, two years is huge. I mean, in two years, these guys can already create some sort of uh, competition for Corana. Corana is already hitting 30 soon, right? What is the program today? We yeah, we are watching currently uh, Artemi versus Duda. The Blitz match uh, here. Rook c7 or a3. a3, I don't... Ah, black wants to play bishop d7, bishop c6. Okay, this looks extremely dangerous for black now. Uh, extremely dangerous. Probably he wants to play bishop a6, I guess. Rook a7 looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, black is just tied up. B5, rook takes a5, extra pawn. Uh, king does not move, bishop does not move. This looks absolutely like a disaster for black. I don't know what happened here. Why did uh, black allow this? Why did he play bishop f6? Ah, because king is 7, knight f7, right? So I missed that trick. Um, I think then he should just probably play bishop b6 then. And go into this knight d7, bishop d7, rook d7, opposite color bishop endgame. Because this is definitely not good. Uh, this is just... Uh, okay, maybe... Maybe rook a7, rook c7 now, yeah. Bishop e8. Oh, rook a8! Rook a8. First b4, and then rook a8. You exchange these rooks, and white is just uh, very dominating, yeah. Because if you play bishop a8, immediately black will play b4 later. Um, so b4... Or, yeah, I would outplay b4 here, probably, without thinking much. And then, of course, black plays rook c8, yeah, so maybe, maybe Artemiev is right. Maybe he is uh, correctly thinking. Artemiev gonna clinch it? Uh, not sure. In fact, you don't know how kids will evolve, so we don't know if Hero becomes so much better. For instance, Dodo or Van Jordan won't blossom slightly later. That is true. That is true. And in fact, I don't see anybody having uh, a chance at all to beat Magnus in the next uh, five years. At all. But when he hits around 34, 35, already his calculation skills gonna, you know, uh, take a hit and everything else. So f4, maybe bishop e4, um, bishop f3, okay. This looks like uh, white is, is gonna try to just play a slow game. a3, uh, king g2, bishop e4, king g3, f4, that sort of game, right? I mean, black, uh, black, black has, uh, black is doing okay. I think, um, yeah, I think uh, black is doing better now than he did before. So rook a6 was to prevent bishop c6, I guess. Now f6 looks good, um, but maybe not. Yeah, because check. So king g2, king g3, standard. You know, improving your king. You know, these guys are d doing a good job. So let's see. Check, king f8, h4 probably, bishop e4, nice, rook c4, then what? If rook c4, okay, so he plays rook c3, I'll still play h4 probably. And white needs a plan, right? He needs a plan how to win this position. It probably involves uh, playing, uh, but black has bishop c6 there at some point, so white needs a plan. I don't see a plan. I see one plan, right? That's playing something like bishop b7, rook bishop a6, trying to get the bishop to a6, okay, that's one of the plans that I see. Uh, of course, black will play, okay, white's trying to get his bishop there, uh, it's not so simple, bishop b7, rook c7, I guess, yeah. Uh, bishop g4, 
Not so easy to win this position. F3, King F2. Nope, doesn't work. Yeah, I think Vlad doesn't know what to do. He should probably exchange the bishops and go into the rook endgame, try to win it that way. Uh, you can see the stream? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Alright, so it's a repetition. Yeah, it, now, this was this was pity because uh, this sh he should have won this game. This endgame should be winning. Um, he should be winning this endgame. He cannot allow this um, draw to happen. So I would say bishop b7, uh, rook c7, bishop a6, rook a7. That's the um, thing, right? And then probably white should just bring in his king. Um, maybe. But maybe it's not so simple. Maybe it is not so simple, in fact, yeah. Hmm. You know what? There is a chance that maybe white should play a4 and go b5 at some point. Um, okay, so I'm missing a game. Alright, they probably started. So let's see. Ah, come on. Okay, they probably started. Yeah, they started. And Duda is already... Already having... Um, better position. Now he has to survive his black, which I have serious doubts about. Yeah, this looks like white is better now. D5, G5, oh my god, what is this G5? What is this G5? Who taught him that? What is this G5? Ooh, Queen takes G5, Rook G8, and then Rook G4, and Queen E5. Wow. Look at this, guys. If Black Queen gets to E5, that is an achievement, right? G5. Wow. That is bloody amazing move. Bloody amazing. Even though it doesn't end the game, right? Because white will just simply play rook b1. And uh, I'm not sure how black can uh, proceed later. Right? Bishop b2 is still coming. So rook g4 probably has to be played. Queen f3. Queen e5. Bishop b1. And then what? Because the bishop f5, then bishop b2, d4, rook d1, white is uh, just, uh, you know, enjoying his game, extra pawn. Knight h5 maybe, yeah? Knight h5, queen f3. I don't know. Mm. This is an incredibly interesting position. Very creative play. Yeah, I agree. This is an incredibly interesting position. Uh, this, you should analyze at home for sure. So this is the line that you can practice. You guys probably can. Um, uh, I think you can get this uh, position in your tournament plays or something, or in your blitz games. This is very highly likely. Yeah, I mean it's a topical line. Queen f3 and then what? Queen f3, queen e5, rook b1. What is the point? What can black do? Rook b1. Bishop f5, bishop b2. Um, I don't see the killer move for black. Do you guys see it? I don't see it. Maybe d4, yeah? Maybe just simply d4. And then bishop f5, and oh my god, he just blunders, yeah? Bishop f5, bishop, f, bishop b2, d4, rook d1. Maybe it is not a blunder, yeah? Maybe it is not a blunder, but... Um, very risky play. D4, right. Okay, D4. And if Queen B7, that's... That's greedy. That will be greedy. Um, I would be really scared to play Queen B7, but I bet the computer likes Queen B7. I bet the computer would like that move. Um, because Bishop E4, Queen B5 check and Rook moves. And if Black just plays uh, maybe Rook B8, then Queen C6. Yeah, Because if White now plays Rook D1, then black can just even the long castle. And uh, white is kind of stuck with the... Uh... Wow, he went for this thing. He went for the spawn. Duda is the computer. Okay. Ah. Rook d1. Bishop g2 is impossible. 
because white takes and plays queen c6. So rook has to go somewhere. Uh, rook b8 probably, yeah. Rook b8 first, and then bishop g2. That I can... But then bishop d4 is a threat. Bishop d4 right now is the biggest threat there is. So, um... Wow. Um... I don't know. I think black is in trouble. Okay, maybe take on g2. Bishop takes, rook takes, queen c6. Uh, but black has no queen e4 because of queen f6, right? So, um... I don't know. I think black is just worse here. Um, board is on fire. That is true. Rook e8. Rook e8 probably has to be played. I don't see any other move. Rook e8. Rook e8. And just allow white to take on d4. Uh, but then what? Yeah, because white has queen c5 check, and he's got like a gazillion of extra pawns uh, and uh, very strong bishops. I think Artemiev misplayed this position, and and so Duda is, is gonna win this game, and um, yeah, Duda is gonna win this game, and he's gonna be in the final. So this was a fantastic match, absolutely fantastic. He takes d4. Uh, white should just play this move without thinking. Bishop a3, also pretty good, I guess, because queen c5 is coming. Yeah, Duda is just winning this. Um, he gets all the pawns in the world, and uh, black... Yep, black has no counterplay. Wow. Well, that's, that's what happens when you play risky lines, and you don't analyze them well. That is exactly what happens. You should analyze your lines well with the computer. You should be prepared. Uh, you should be prepared. And king d2. King d2 looks... King d2... Whoa, 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 what is this now? What was that bishop d5 all about? Um, bishop g2... What was that? D5? I think D5 was bad. Yeah, D5 was uh, probably missing something. Um, so we got some game going. Probably White is just winning anyway. Knight G4. Ah, uh, Knight E4. Rook G4 doesn't look good. I don't, I don't know what looks good. Oh, uh, he just uh, goes into this position. Yeah, White, White, White's queen is very powerful. He probably just wins this. Queen b4 check, king e2, and then the queen a3. Knight e4, queen a5. So we, 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 what we are now seeing is some blitz tricks. Black is trying to get some blitz tricks going. Uh, some checks here and there, you know, centralization. Knight e4, cheapos, yeah. Knight c3, queen a1, knight c3, rook d, g2, there's king d d3, so queen a2. Oh, you just gave up the whole rook. Nah, come on, man. You don't give up that rook. Knight c3 check, followed by rook g2 was the only way to play this. So our team if, uh, is killed. He is killed here. White, congratulations on successful defense. White wins the match. Oh. Yeah. Um... That evaluation jump, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, that's uh, to me. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I mean, the uh, RTM can resign. This. There is no way he can. Uh, he can. He just killed here. Twenty four. Anything wins. Extra rook. Come on. You can resign this. You don't play. White has increment and everything. You just resign this. Check and twenty six mate. Yeah. All right. Dudu is just having fun. He could have made it him in two moves, but uh, so so the match is over. Um, I guess yeah. I guess that Karakhan choice was really bad um, for Artemiev. He lost a critical game, and after that, he did not uh, win the game with White, where he had an extra pawn. He should have won the game. So and that's what happened in chess. If you don't score. 
you get scored. Okay, so that's what happens. So, okay, that was a great match. I go. I hope you guys enjoyed it along with the title Tuesday. And that's it for today. Hope to see you next. All right, sometime. And have a, and be safe and stay 